Is Peppermint OS a good operating system for the average user? Let's get right into it. Retrieving the installation disk image is trivial, however there is little explanation for what to do with it for someone who is new to Linux or rather has only used the operating system which came pre-installed to their PC. The homepage does have a link to a blog post that defers to a YouTube channel that did an installation of Peppermint. However, the instructions involve torrents and manually installing Rufus to Windows 10. It seemed to touch beyond what most average computer users will do. I would like to see more distributions offering a USB and or a DVD installation media to order, uh, as well as a good written instructions to go with it. Uh, think of your Linux distribution as someone's first, so to remove technical barriers would benefit not just new users, but your own distribution as well. For simplicity's sake, I'll be testing Peppermint in VirtualBox. The steps for installing Peppermint are pretty straightforward, choosing to download the latest packages during the install, so to save the need as to do so after logging in for the first time uh, was something that I wanted to do. However, I did receive an error at the end of the installation that would come back to bite anyone new to Linux and, you know, Debian-based distributions in general. After installing Peppermint, I also had to install the VirtualBox guest editions. This isn't something you will need to do unless you're also trying it in VirtualBox. Just one more reboot and I can get into the meat of the matter. After the reboot, I thought I'd check to see the software that was installed. Something odd for the XFCE desktop environment, Peppermint chose to use Nemo instead of Thunar for their file manager. Not bad, just an odd choice. And I noticed almost immediately that the version of Firefox that Peppermint had chosen to install turned out to be version 71, which is more than two years old. The last time the Peppermint installation media had been updated was in December 2019, so it seemed clear the installation failed to pull the latest updates. The multiple software managers in the menu either stated there was no updates available or offered that I needed to run dpackage configure A to resolve a problem. At this point, I had to switch to the terminal to correct the problem and continue with review. Uh, to be clear, this would be a deal breaker for most average users especially if trying Linux for the first time. Having a broken operating system before even starting doesn't sell confidence to the average user. After correcting the issue, I checked the software managers again, which still stated that there were no updates, so I went back to the terminal and I updated the system manually that way. Uh, that took about six and a half minutes, one more reboot, and back to reviewing. Firefox had updated to version 91, which is just one release below what, uh, as of recording, is what is available on Arch Linux. That isn't too far off, so I'm okay with that. Some of the things that set Peppermint apart from other Linux distributions is the custom software made specifically for it. The Peppermint settings panel offers a one-stop shop for most system settings. However, it does still suffer on theming due to the XFC splitting applications for theming the window versus title bar versus desktop versus title bar. Most would assume theming goes under one application. Splitting it is convoluting to most average users. A graphical way of managing your printer is also here, which is a nice touch for those who still work with paper. And the option here for a system-wide ad block is also nice if the end user so chooses to use it. The web browser manager offering a separate single stop for eight choices of web browsers is nice for the average user who may be very particular for what browser they use if they are browser aware at all. The most interesting aspect of Peppermint is ICE. Uh, ICE is the graphical configuration tool for creating single site browser links in your start menu. If you're unaware, a single site browser is your web browser with most things hidden or removed. So to make the web page you're looking at seem as it would for a desktop application. Uh, a few interesting defaults are Microsoft Office applications like Word and Excel, some games, and Gmail. While I can't fault them for choosing the most popular options here, 
This will most likely fit the bill for your average computer user. The lack of an offline office suite may be aggravating to the average computer user. Doing your work on the midnight flight to Dallas? Hope you paid for Wi-Fi. If setting this up for a friend or family member, I would still install LibreOffice and Thunderbird. How I could see ICE being most useful is for isolating your browser history for specific sites. Things like managing multiple social media accounts. This would be very helpful as ICE can, or does by default if you choose Firefox, create separate profiles for your single site browsers. The last point I find most interesting about Peppermint is continuing to maintain a 32-bit image for much older uh, computer hardware. I personally could be interested in breathing new life into an old XP netbook that cannot run 64-bit operating systems or boot EFI, although that may be better for a restoration project to go alongside my Windows 95 and 98 PCs. Uh, what would, would you think? Uh, Peppermint or roll back to Windows XP? Either way, it could be fun. All said, Peppermint is a very interesting project with a lot of promise and interest. I can't, however, recommend it to the average computer user. The initial breakage would be too much of a sticking point. Having the patience to read the alerts or look up what to do if they don't understand the alerts isn't something I would expect the average user to do. And the reliance on single site browsers for applications could be a hang up, either unavailable Wi-Fi, or in the case of restoring older PCs, may not be broadcasting wireless G or wireless N to connect to. From what I've seen, most Wi-Fi support is for the last two revisions, meaning AC and AX will gradually push out older hardware just by attrition. What do you think of my assessment? Would you still recommend Peppermint to the average computer user? Uh, comment below, and please leave a like and subscribe if you'd like to hear more from me. Thank you very much.